Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and today we are doing landscape lines. <laughs> we have Keenan here who's working the cameras. Hello, thank you for coming today. Thank you for being here. And we will be doing this project in seven steps, which is a lot of steps, but they're a lot, they'll actually go really, really quick. So don't be intimidated by that. Our very first step is we are going to be drawing our lines and then using our masking fluid pen to go over the lines. Our second step is we will paint a wash in our foreground. Our third step, we will do the midground. Our fourth step, we will do the far ground. Our fifth step, we will put in our sky, nice, beautiful, moody sky. Mm. And our uh, sixth step, we will be doing like shrubbery. Yeah, here. Shrubbery. 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 And our very last step is we will be removing our masking fluid, pen, gum, ink. We'll be removing it. We'll be rubbing it off. Okay, so for this project, I have a few different supplies. If you're a watercolor box subscriber, um, this came in your box. So we have this uh, masking fluid pen, which is so great. I'm gonna show you how to use it. That's the point of this project. We are using two brushes around six and around two. This is the Princeton Heritage Series, but we also have Let's Make Our Classic Series. There's a bunch of different paint brush brands, use whatever you have. But these are my go-to brushes. Um, we are using four colors. And this paint is our in-house paint brand, Dandelion Paint Co. And our first color is black. And our second color is violet. And our third color is dandelion yellow. And our last color is Tahoe Blue. Now, if this is your very first time with watercolor ever, I highly suggest looking at our beginner series video on our YouTube channel. It gives you context of the supplies we use, how to use them, techniques, all of that fun stuff. If you're familiar, then you can just keep on going and we'll jump right in. Sweet. Okay. Uh, oh, a couple other things for supplies. So, we have the um, drawing gum, and essentially drawing gum is it's kind of like liquid glue. So wherever you put it, you'll see a blue mark. And as it dries, when it dries, you can paint over it, and it will keep wherever you put the mark white underneath. It acts as like a, it covers the paper, it keeps it white. What? So for example, we'll be doing these lines, letting them dry, painting over this, letting that dry, and then you remove the masking fluid and it's just the white paper underneath. Yeah, it's so great. It's like that really wonderful. That just how you got the line, okay. Yes. This is gonna be amazing. <laughs> wow. You're picking up what I'm putting down? Now, I'm, now yes, now I'm smelling what you're cooking. <laughs> so um, this is great because it's a marker. So you could just draw with it. This actually comes with, you can get ones with different size tips. So if you want some that are thinner, you can do that. You can also buy bottles of just masking fluid. Uh, we sell, I think we sell the Windsor & Newton ones. Um, and I've heard two things about those. One way that you can, okay, okay, let me back up. When it comes to bottles of masking fluid, the reason why I'm a little bit nervous to use those is because I use a paintbrush with those and whenever you put your bristles in with this masking fluid, it will ruin the bristles. So you have to either like really, really clean out your brush when you're done or not use a brush. Or I've heard people actually dip their bristles in dish soap and kind of let that harden and then use that to grab the masking fluid and then it just rinses all off. So it acts as like a protective layer That's of your smart. bristles. Um, I've actually also, but I haven't tested this, I saw this really cool like pen looking thing. It kind of reminded me of, of a calligraphy pen or a nib, calligraphy nib, where you can adjust how thick the spacer is. So you can adjust how thin or thick your lines are. And it's just like this metal tip pen that you can um, draw with. For I haven't tried it. For masking fluid? For masking fluid. Oh, that's cool. I saw it. I haven't tested it. Huh. I thought it was really cool. So that's just a quick overview of masking fluid. This is also a gummy eraser, um, which we should have these on our website. Um, they do not come in your subscription box. This is just like something helpful. Cause before I would like rub, see how you can just rub it off. Mm -hmm. So you can totally do that. 
or you can use this gummy eraser. Oh, with such ease. With such ease. I didn't know this existed until I was teaching a tutorial and then someone, it was like a live, and then someone's like, why don't you just use like a gummy eraser? Like, gosh, I wish I can remember the exact name of this. And um, I was like, what is that? <laughs> She's like, you use it to remove masking fluid. And I was like, oh, <laughs> well, I should know that huh. exists <laughs> as a teacher. But I'm learning just the same way you guys are learning, okay? Takes time. Yeah. There's a lot of information out there. Now, the reason why I like this compared to my finger is I notice that when I use my finger, my finger has like oils and moisture on it. Gross. So it could. If you wash your hands. Don't worry about that, Keenan. Sorry. And so when I rubbed my finger off, if there was any moisture on my finger, it actually lifted, like made the paint smear because I was reconstituting the watercolor with a moist finger. Tip. Finger. It's not like I like. Sure. It's not like it was... No, you don't have to explain yourself, Sarah. <laughs> it's not it's like, like I'm dipping my here. finger in the thing or whatever, or licking it. It's just like, sometimes your hands get sweaty, okay? A stray snack. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I think that's why this is uh, nice. Really helpful. That is nice. It looks like a block of soap. Yeah, it does look like soap or like a sponge. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like? Uh, it just feels like rubber. Oh, okay. Yeah, just cool. like really rough rubber. Oh. Um, and of course, I use my favorite magical tape to tape my paper down. <sighs> Whoa, that was a lot of talking. All right, <laughs> let's get to going. So we're gonna do our oath. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you, Keenan. Okay. So we're gonna use our pencil to actually draw our lines first and our landscapes first. And this also is super cool, is like after you draw your pencils, if you go over it with the masking fluid, when you rub off the masking fluid, it also rubs off the pencil marks. Oh, double player. So you don't even have to worry about pencil marks because that's what I was worried about when I made this project. It rubbed right off and I was like, sweet. Okay, so this is called landscape lines and I kind of just wanted to show you how doing line work can kind of communicate the movement of something, even if it's not realistic. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so I'm gonna break this up into one, two, three, four sections. My, uh, I want this to be, like the top section to be um, at a third. So whenever you do landscapes, you usually never want to cut it completely in half you always want to compositionally hit on a third. So either it's the, the top third is the sky and the bottom two thirds is the land or it's opposite. The top two thirds are the sky and the bottom third is a land. Does that make sense? Yes it does, but is there a reason why? It's just compositionally it feels better. Got it. Because when you split it right down the middle then it automatically creates like such a strong separation. Um, but also, I would like to say that a lot of art is understanding the rules of composition and elements and design, and then being able to break them whenever you want because you're an artist. So like, I'm saying this as a general rule, but when you go to create your own paintings, you can do whatever you want. Um, Cause I've done landscapes before where it's actually kind of like half and half, and I felt fine about it. Hmm. So, um, Remember the rules, the rules are important to understand the rules because then you can figure out the best way to break them. Okay, all right. So I got my pencil. Life tips by Sarah Cray. Life tips by Sarah Cray. Figure out the rules and then break them. Figure out the rules, then break them. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, we're gonna do a sloping hill going this way. So I'm gonna start mm, not quite in the middle, a little bit less than the, um, halfway point, so about here. And I'm just gonna curve and have that go off my page. And remember you guys, this is supposed to be loose. There's no outline, play with this. It's just a piece of paper, don't stress. We're just making marks on a page, no big deal. Easy. Second one is about in the middle here. I'm gonna have this slope upward. And you can also do like more hills, less hills. This is your painting. You can do whatever you want. 
And then I'm gonna have another one kind of come across, so like right above my first till, have that slope up. And then my very last one, and you can see if I were to separate my page into thirds, one, two, three, I'm on this top third, and have that swoop down, okay? And now we're gonna put in our landscape lines. So I wanted these to feel very long. So I had my landscape lines going kind of across them uh, horizontally. And then as I went on different hills to like kind of kind of make them feel a little bit more separate, I made the rows like closer together. So you see the spacing on this? Mm, yeah. On this one, I wanted them to be a little bit closer. And I'm just kind of following the first line that I made. Wow. Okay. And then this one will be the closest one because it's the farthest away. Oh, that got a little wonky, but that's okay. And I'm just kind of following that first shape that I made. And they, it doesn't have to be perfect. Some of these lines are gonna get a little bit crazy. That's okay. Okay. So now you see one, two, three. This one, I wanted it to feel like you're right on top of it and it's going back into the distance as if the hill is continuing to go down mm -hmm. on the other side. So I had the lines go um, vertical instead of horizontal. So, um, and these ones, because this is the foreground, this is closest to us, our lines are gonna be a little bit wider apart than all of the others. But you can see that I'm kind of having them all round to this area. So I'm not doing like a straight, like, none of these are very, all of, all, okay, all of these lines have a curve to them. I'm not doing this. You see the difference? Totally. And that's mostly because I wanted this to feel a little bit softer. There's nothing wrong with this, because in loose paintings, you can totally do this. This just feels a little bit more rigid to me and static. And I wanted this to feel soft. So I did a little wave in my lines. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> and I want to point out one thing really quick, which is when you're doing lines in a landscape, um, they're super helpful if you're trying to get perspective and how to communicate depth and space. So for example, I'm sure you've seen those pictures where it's like rows, like a vineyard or something. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So how you communicate movement or like depth and space of straight lines is they have to go towards a vanishing point. And a vanishing point in a painting is the farthest spot away from the viewer. So for example, wow, I can draw straight lines. That's really amazing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's say this is my composition. And let's say here is my horizon line. And so this is the land, this is the sky. And let's say that um, I want to do rows of lavender or vineyards or whatever. This is, and like, let's say this is the part that's farthest away from me. Then whenever I do lines, the rows, they'll go to that vanishing point. Mm. Well, that's crazy looking. And then, and I know you're just like, okay, but does this actually communicate space? Well, hold on, my friends. This is just the beginning. Okay, so let's say those are my rows. And then put in some like trees. We're doing scribble trees here. So like here are trees. Here's like a mountain range. Here are some clouds that get smaller as I go out. And then when you combine this with value, I'm just introducing a value change. Now we have a, 
now this feels like this is a landscape going back. Yeah. Do you feel that now? I feel like I'm looking at a farm that just got freshly plowed. Yes. Yes. So when you're trying to communicate um, lines over a long distance, you need to pay attention to the angle of these lines and where they're going to, if they're going to a vanishing point. Now let's say we do that same thing, but we don't use a vanishing point. Here's my horizon, and I just wanna do rows. Your brain is gonna tell you to do this. Because you're like, they're rows, they're even apart. This does not communicate depth or space at all. Doesn't this look flat? You've made a comb. Yeah, like you're just like, and then even if I put in trees, and even if I put in mountains, because this is as if we were looking at a bird's eye view of the land, so overhead, which, and this is why it's tricky, whenever we go to draw something, that's how our brain tells us. When we think of a hand, we think of a hand. We don't think of hands. You know what I mean? <laughs> Love the motions. But this is how we see them. We see them in use. We see them from our perspective. We see them foreshortened and in different positions. Our brain though, when we think of hand, we think of hand. And so when we go to draw stuff, our brain always wants us to do things as if it's right over top, flat. Same thing with flowers. Like think of a flower. We very rarely see it that way. We see it from our like standing up and looking at it, right? Okay. <laughs> Keenan's face. I'm, I'm just like blown away right now. It's like, yeah, this is a hand. And then I'm like, but I never look at my hand like this. You don't look at your hand like this, but this is how when we picture a hand in our brain, this what? is what our brain does. And that's why sometimes drawing and painting is like really difficult because we have to ignore what our brain is telling us to do and to actually draw what we see with our eyes and not what our brain tells us we see with our eyes. So if we think of drawing rows in a landscape, our brain thinks of this because we know that they're even apart and that they just keep on going forever. But when we actually look at rows in a landscape, they merge, all merge to a vanishing point over time. And so I challenge you next time you're out and about and you see a lot of rows and you can see that it's like a distance, stop and look at, do those rows move? And how do those rows move over time? Because I promise you, they don't just go like this. Like they, they eventually all will um, connect, depending on how far it is. Okay, that was a long explanation, but I thought it was good to know. So this one, I'm not totally using vanishing points or perspectives in this one. This one I wanted to keep really loose. I didn't want to have you guys have to worry about drawing that, but I thought that that was a really great lesson for people who are interested in painting landscapes with rows um, to think about the lines, okay? Think of that, that perspective. Think about horizon lines and vanishing points. Okay, this is just kind of fun. So now that I drew it, I'm gonna take my masking fluid pen and you might have to like press it down a few times to, till the blue comes out. This one I used before, so it's ready. It's primed and ready. And then just follow your pencil marks. Okay, and then I'm gonna do Mid ground. It's excellent how even different shades, like the slight blue that this is giving, gives your landscape more feeling of like real. Mm. It just pops a little bit off the, the paper. Yeah. Well, and I hope you guys can see the blue on camera because really depending on the angle of light, sometimes I can see this blue color and sometimes I can't. So sometimes I'm like, <laughs> looking to see where their glare hits so I can tell. And we will be using this pen um, in other tutorials. I can't wait to show you like all the different ways you can use it. But I thought that this would be a really fun way just to get you guys comfortable and familiar with um, how this works. The hardest part is to like not go over, like if I'm meeting these two lines, to not go past the blue line that I've already, does that make sense? Yeah. 
So they intersect and like don't cross Versus over. Overlap, yeah. yeah. Does that stuff come out pretty smoothly? It seems like it does. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Okay. There's my landscape. Now you want to make sure that this is nice and dry before you start painting. So while this <coughs> dries, I'm going to mix some colors. So um, I want to kind of switch up my colors and values a little bit as I move just to kind of help separate the different sections. So on this very first one, you can tell that I kept it like a yellow green in the middle and then did darker values on the sides. And that's because I wanted it to feel um, like a vignette a little bit. Mm. Um, and then here I went with more of a blue green. This one, I brought the yellow green back into the middle and this one, there isn't really any yellow green. It's kind of more blue green and a little bit darker values um, separating them. But if you guys wanted to do like one colored wash, you can. Like the lines are doing the separating work for us already. So feel free to kind of just play it if you want. So I'm gonna mix a couple different greens. So I have yellow here and I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue. And now I have like a nice warm yellow green. And then I'm gonna mix more blue in get a little bit of a darker green and then I'm gonna mix another dark green Ooh, this one has a little bit more blue look how mm. look at how pretty that is okay so so far I have three different greens and then can they still see over here Kenan yep okay I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to desaturate my green and create more of a like brown green. Mm. You see how that looks like browner compared to that one? Yep. That's such a pretty green. Makes me think of a healthy green. Yeah. And I need more yellow. Maybe an edible plant green. I don't eat the plant leaves. The plant what leaves. About spinach. Well, Is I that mean, more of a cool, hmm, mm, fresh spinach. Fresh spinach. Well, gosh, I'm having mm. a hard time picturing the exact green of fresh I'm spinach. I'm gonna go with that that brown, healthy green. My green I said before is like spinach. Okay. Fresh spinach. I like it. Thank you. And then I added a little bit of black to get even a darker value, even more darker green here. And you guys can even do like, oh, that's pretty, like a navy almost. Ooh, look and at look, all these different shades. Yeah. Ooh, look at that green. Ooh, oh my gosh. Oh wow. That's my favorite. Beautiful. Okay, now we got all of our greens. And this is dry. I'm just kind of feeling it. And if it's not sticky, it's dry. <laughs> is that the best way to test it? I don't know. That's how I test it. It has to be. <laughs> Just touch it. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to start with painting my um, foreground. So I'm going to grab my yellow green and starting in the middle, I'm going to put it down and then using my round six, I'm going to kind of do more horizontal hold. So then I'm getting a thicker stroke. If you have larger brushes, please feel free to use them. Question. Yeah. Did you say why you're starting with the lighter yellow or lighter green, the yellow green versus a darker? Does it matter? I don't think it matters. If you want to start on the edges with your darker green and work lighter, you can. Is that what you were? Yeah, because I, I was curious because it almost would make for a fun exercise to try and do a dark to light to, to dark as yeah. that kind of wash exercise. Yeah, totally. And you can do like... Um, like that same thing, but just like starting in the middle as your lightest and then work and get like darker a little bit. Yeah. So like now I'm gonna move to like my darker green. Okay, I see it now. Hmm. 
And don't forget to really utilize your water here. And then let's move to the next green. Ooh, that's a really blue green. That is a pretty green. And try not to overlap your masking fluid when it goes to another section. Okay. I feel like I need to add some like some of that bluish just on the bottom here. And it's nice and wet, so it should just like blend together. And if you wanna do some like wet on wet where you paint the, the section with water first and then just drop in the green, I'll show you what that looks like. This is just water, here's some green. Let me just like drop it in and mm. let it bleed. You can do that. I kind of just wanted, I wanted this to like be enough information so it's kind of like a fun project, but like really give you guys the license to um, like do whatever you want with it, you know? Yeah. Have you seen much bleeding from the masking gum pen at all? Bleeding? Well, just like if it is wet, does that mean you're going to move it around when you put paint down and make a problem? If it is wet, it would just get wet masking fluid on your brush. Which is bad. Yeah, so just like, it, but if it's not sticky, it doesn't take very long to dry. Yeah, it's pretty, it seems pretty quick. Yeah. Okay, so this is feeling pretty good. I do, I, dry, I went in and dropped some yellow in here and I really just feel like that's too vibrant. So um, I'm actually gonna grab some purple because purple is yellow's complement and I'm going to tone down that yellow by just doing a little wash of purple over it. See how it kind of grays it? Mm -hmm. It's still yellow, but it's not like, um, you know. Really bright yellow. It's not like yelling at you yellow, you know what I mean? Wouldn't that be funny if colors talk to you? Uh, yes, <laughs> I would love those conversations. <laughs> But the plot twist is that, like, really bright, happy colors are just secretly angry. <laughs> yeah. Yellow's just like, ah! That reminds me of a book. What is it? It's about crayons. Oh. And they talk. Yeah. They write letters to the, yes. the, the little boy that uses them. Yes. And one of them was just like, yeah. please stop using me for everything, <laughs> I think. That was like red or Yeah, or what blue was it? Okay. Okay, that is my foreground. Now we're gonna to go to my midground. I'm gonna do this one first. And so I'm gonna kind of stay within more of the blue greens on this one. And I'm gonna start by like where these um, like sections meet with other ones. I'm gonna make those the darkest at the bottom. Does that make sense? Yes. So you see, okay. And then I'll introduce lighter greens. Remember to utilize your water to spread out this color. That's gonna make your paint go a lot longer and also give you different values. Mm. And I, I feel like I need a little more blue in there. Oh, too blue. Let's tone that down with a little bit of yellow and black. Black and yellow, black and yellow. What is that, Keith? I think it's a song. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> well, it felt right. It felt like the right thing to say at the time. Good, thank you. I don't, so, thank I didn't you for plan being it. here. It just happened. Great. <laughs> so that was a happy accident. That was a happy accident. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna go to our mid-ground. And again, I want where this meets this at the bottom to be dark. So I'm gonna go with my dark value. And if you gotta mix more as you go, mix more as you go. And if you're like, 
what if it's not the same exact color? Well, don't don't stress about that. You know, like I don't know. That's don't let... the beauty of variance. Yeah. Variety. I'd like to think that there are hills that look like this. Yeah. And then I'm using water to kind of spread this out. Now this one I am going to add a little of this nice light green in the middle just for variation so it's different from this mid-ground. And then along the edges, I'm introducing a darker value as well. Ooh, yeah. That's nice. That's nice. Ooh, those blended well together too. Yeah. Just doing another layer. Okay, now we're on step four, far ground. So quick. So quick. Uh, same thing, this one I'm gonna keep more like bluish green, grayish green. Um, do it darker along the edges. And then as it gets out to the middle, you're gonna highlight that. And by highlight that, I just mean you're gonna use a lighter value. So just use that water. And if you want to bring in like some more turquoise colors. Mm. So if you add turquoise to a green, is that more of a blue or a green green? Um, so turquoise is a is like a blue green. Okay. So it would make it a cooler green, a bluer green. Cooler green. So warm greens are yellow greens, cool greens are blue greens. Does that make sense? Yes, affirmative. Okay, and then I'm gonna do dark value again. Let's bring in some, just a, a little bit more yellow, just so it's not just blue. And I think it's so cool how it just kind of like, I don't know, resists. Yeah, it, gets, it goes away from the, yeah. yeah. I guess resist is a much more intelligent way to phrase <laughs> what I was trying to say. It just came to my head. I feel like I tried to say resist earlier and it, that word didn't come to me. It gets gone. It gets gone. Gosh, I love this turquoise color right in the middle. Yeah, that's a great color. Ba-bam! Okay, we're gonna let that dry. And we're gonna move to our sky. So, for our sky, we're gonna do clouds, but we want it to feel kind of moody and overcast and gray, like there's layers of clouds, like maybe there was just a storm or a storm is coming. So whenever you do clouds, if this is our sky, the, the ones that are closest to us are bigger, okay? And then as it goes deeper into space, they get smaller and shorter does that make sense yes it does that's how we communicate layers that's so how like, i draw birds <laughs> perfect <Just those. laughs> that's my bird you can do clouds you can do birds <laughs> it's fine now um so and i know you're just like sarah is that really all the information you're giving me well yes but we can do this affirmative <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to wet the sky with water. And we're using our LMA branded paper, um, which is just really wonderful for when you're doing skies because it does not bloom as easy. Um, and if you have a larger brush, do this with the larger brush. Like you can use a one inch wash for this. I just only have around six right now, so that's what I'm showing you with. Okay, so now that it's nice and wet, I want you to take a little bit of black and a tiny, tiny bit of blue just to give the black a, a, a slightly different color, but don't do too much blue because we still want this to feel very gray. And then I'm gonna do big swoops in the front here 
and you can use water to help move that. So this is my like big cloud up front. And you can even drop in a little bit more. And you're just gonna kind of drop in this gray and let it move, okay? And then we're gonna do another bigger cloud over here. So I'm just doing like curves. And um, I know that some of you are probably like, what are you doing? <laughs> Clouds are really elusive, and I noticed that the more you like try and make them like super detailed, the worse they turn out. So like really just say, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drop this in, and I'm just gonna let it be, and I'm not gonna worry about it, and I'm just gonna say, you're a cloud now, and then move on. So we did our two big clouds. Now I'm gonna do like a smaller cloud in the middle. So you see that I'm kind of using more of my point more. I'm letting it be a little bit more sweepy and I'm letting it, I'm like thinning it, so it's getting thinner and not as long. Because this is a cloud kind of farther away. And then here, it's gonna get even thinner and shorter. Okay. And then we'll do even like another thinner, shorter one. Oh, I need more color. Another like thinner, shorter one in here. These are good looking clouds. Like, don't they just kind of like settle? Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, that's a cloud, okay. Um, I do want this to be a little bit darker, kind of like a similar feel of what I have going on in my whole painting, which is kind of like a vignette. Mm. So I'm gonna do just introduce this gray along this edge here. And if you wanna go back in and drop in like another layer right in here to darken some of these up a little bit, you can. And this paper will just let them kind of like move or let those values move. So I'm just darkening some of these up just a little bit. Doesn't that feel like a nice moody sky? Yes. And also if you're feeling like something feels too like, I always like to go things in and mess them up a little bit if it's just feeling too structured. So like even with some of these that I've already put down like that darker, I'm just gonna kind of like work the area and soften them up a little bit. You can't totally erase, but you can kind of like blend it out. So we've had two tips from Sarah today. One, find the rules and break them. Yes. And two, if it's too structured, change it. <laughs> Mess it up on purpose. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go for a nice little baby over here. Doesn't that feel like nice and moody? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that you can remember about clouds and skies is they are ever changing. The colors, I mean, like, have you ever seen a green sky? Because I have. Like in the Midwest here, when it gets cloudy and a storm is coming, that sky is green. I'm not kidding. So like, if you have too much green in your sky, you're just in the Midwest. If you have a lot of colors, maybe it's sunset. If you have really soft, wispy cloud, that exists. If you have these strong, really structured, fluffy clouds and it's about to rain, that exists. Like, the sky is ever changing and whenever you think that you've seen a sky, you see another picture or you're out during a sunset or just in the middle of the day and you're just like, I've never seen the sky look this way before. So like, be kind to yourself when you're painting these things because like there is literally so much variation within a sky that like, you're fine. <laughs> like there are clouds that look like this somewhere, sometime, someplace. Pretty sure Simba saw his dad in the clouds, so. 
<laughs> you never know what you're going to find. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh. Okay. I think we're ready. Sweet. So I know in the warm up I said we're going to do our bushes first and then um, take out the masking fluid. I lied to you. We're going to take out our masking fluid and then do our bushes. I lied to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just to be clear, I lied. Just to be clear, I messed up and I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay. So now this feels dry. Okay. So now I'm going to take my eraser. And just kind of erase. <laughs> Huh. Rub gently where there is masking fluid. Now I want to show you what it's like with my finger. Okay, so that was with the eraser. Can and you do the one on the, yeah, that one? <sighs> so they both work. I feel like when you use this gummy eraser, you gotta like pick it off, but that's true for like your finger. Oh, do you see my pencil lines erasing? Just disappearing. So cool. How do you decide what lines to erase? Uh, what order? Uh. I don't have any rhyme or reason to this. Okay, I'll just I'll just double check. Because <laughs> it seemed like you started sort of in the middle, <laughs> went backwards, went forward, <laughs> now we're elsewhere. I'm okay. just curious. What you guys have to know about me is um, I don't really do things in rhyme or reason order. Um, it's a problem I have. Um, I actually very rarely let people see my spreadsheet notes or like when I'm laying out ideas or bullet points because sometimes I use numbers to organize, sometimes I use letters, sometimes I capitalize things. A dash. Sometimes I put things in bold if I think it's really <laughs> important or I'll use stars. All in the same document. It's extremely, so if you think there's a hierarchy where you're just like, why is this asterisk and this one bold? I don't know. It's just, it's just the way that it is. It's just the way that I am. So, uh, Keenan, yeah. there is no reason why I'm doing this, mm. the order that I'm doing this. Okay. okay. No, I was just, thank you for that. You're welcome. Wow, this is so much faster, though, with this, like, gummy eraser. Is it? Yeah, because, like, mm. I don't know. I, I think it's also easier for me to use a point and to just do the lines. Mm -hmm. Where with my finger, like... You know, I was kind of surrounding area. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of nice just to be able to kind of like pinpoint what it is that you want to nice. peel off. Look at how clean those lines are. Fresh. Fresh and so clean. Almost like a, a thunderstorm just passed through mm -hmm. and just cleaned the, the uh, irrigation lines. Yes. Perfectly. Yes, this is an irrigation painting, Keenan. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Send this into the Farmers Bureau. Use it as an example. There we go. You want your irrigation lines to look like this. You clearly don't understand. <laughs> Ears are brown, covered in dirt. <laughs> they need to be white. <laughs> uh. And you can tell when your painting is still a little bit wet. Like here, it was still a bit, little bit wet because when I rubbed off my masking fluid, a little bit of green kind of got rubbed into my white. But um, I like, if you look at the example, that's true for some of the areas in the examples as well. So like, don't, don't let that bother you. If you notice that it's still a little bit damp, then like, just wait. Wait to, to um, rub off the masking fluid.
Okay, last section. I'm gonna try and find a clean corner here. Is there a tool to clean your eraser? Yes. That might be a weird question. Is there really? Yeah, it's your fingers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There could be. There's so many things that I have no idea about. It's well, kind of the, amazing. The reason I ask is because there's a, in carpentry and woodworking, there's a tool called a spindle sander uh -huh. that oscillates. Uh -huh. And so it's cylindrical sanding discs. Uh -huh. And as you sand wood, they get kind of clogged up with wood, right? Yeah. Well, they have like a, a beeswax cleaner for the sanding discs. Oh, that's cool. To make them like new. So you can just reuse that sanding disc over and over way longer than you normally would. That's awesome. Yeah. Honestly, there could be. There's just so many things that exist in the art world that yeah. I'm learning about. Hmm. Like this eraser for one. That's a so, great, great thing to learn about too. If somebody knows, Share, just you know, tell us. just let us know. Okay, almost done here. It's so satisfying. There has got to be like an Instagram account where like somebody just cleans off masking fluid or removes tape or something just to get the satisfying, you know? There is. There is? I don't know. I just wanted to agree with you. <laughs> so there has to be. I agree. Okay. Nice and I think that's all rubbed off. Okay. Now our very last step is I'm going to put in some bushes. Now the reason why I waited till after I removed the masking fluid is because I want it to go over my lines. And if I painted it before, then when I removed the lines, it would have had a line go straight through the bush. Does that make sense? Yes. So I removed it, so now I can paint over it. So I'm gonna get like a really dark green blue. And using my two on the top of this foreground, I'm just gonna do roundish shrubbery shapes. <laughs> and that's the technical term, <laughs> in case you're curious. Roundish. Roundish that shrubbery. It could also be a last name, roundish? Yeah. I'm gonna change my name to that. Old Mr. Roundish here. On the and the, maybe this is a grove of trees. Ooh. Maybe it's, you know what I mean? like. Just remember that your brain is gonna to wanna to make patterns. Okay, hear me out. It could be farming equipment. Oh, that would be cool, Keenan. What if you throw a tractor up there? Yes. I'm just kind of lifting some color out to get some lighter values in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna do tiny ones up here. The reason why these are smaller and these are bigger is because these are farther away. And when things get farther away from you, they get smaller. Mm. So these are just little guys over here. Done. Very nice. Okay, now let's remove the tape. So very carefully and softly remove this magical tape to expose a gorgeous clean edge. Oh, yes. So good. That is extremely satisfying. I know. Because the tape's all dirty and you're like, oh, ugh. and then you remove it and you're like, oh, oh no. Look at that clean edge. Mm. Last one. Mm. 
it's done. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, I hope you guys allow yourself to play and have fun with this project. Get used to the masking fluid pen, maybe even do different layers. You can do smaller versions, like a bunch of smaller ones, and you can change up, you know, your lines and the clouds and I don't know, just like play, play with all of these wonder supp wonderful supplies that you have here. Um, if you want to share your work, I highly suggest it. It is extremely scary, but the more you share your work, one, the easier it gets to keep on sharing it, and two, it gives other people permission and courage to also share their work. So if you wanna join our Facebook group, that's why we set it up, just so you guys can like share your work. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor on Facebook. And we have an Instagram account, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. Uh, and if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. And Keenan, you were great. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.